It's gonna let me do it. We will see in a second. Hmm. All right, everybody, we are live. It's on our Facebook page, the PR, so you can share it now if you'd like. Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the private room. And tonight we are doing a special episode with several of our advocates and community leaders, as well as different nonprofits and organizations are all on with us tonight. They're going to be sharing their why. So what it is that they do in the community, what is their business, what is their nonprofit, um, what are the causes that they're compassionate, they're, they're passionate about, and also telling us specifically why it is that they do what they do. Um, this is in preparation for my new book, Earn Your Wings, a 30-day journey from survivor to advocate, which will be going um, hopefully live and published April 1st. Um, it is really a 30-day journey learning about um, being a survivor, um, the steps that you can take to becoming an advocate, um, learning how to uh, market yourself, but really digging deep in the first couple of days to see really what your purpose is and to find out about your strengths and some of those pointers for what, well, what has helped me on my journey, I am now sharing with you. So I will be doing that with my new book, Earn Your Wings, A 30-Day Journey from Survivor to Advocate. So what I have done is I have invited some of my friends in the community. We already had part one back in January. Now we are having our second episode to talk to our community leaders about their why, because again, it's not just about me, it's about us coming together as a community to make a difference and to be able to reduce violence and crime and the deterioration of families in our communities. So we are really gonna just jump right in here because we have several advocates on tonight and we wanna make sure that we hear all of their stories. And so I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get going. Um, really what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do a round table at first. Everybody can introduce themselves and their organizations. And then we're gonna start digging deep into what their causes are, what their mission is and learning more about their individual stories. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Not sure what your view is on your end. So I'm gonna be kind of going by my view. So if it's not yours, I'm so sorry. But I have first up Miss um, Miss Allie. Miss Allie, please introduce yourself. Tell us about your your business briefly, and um, we're gonna just go from there. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Please share this on your Facebook pages because we do we're gonna talk about opportunities for you, those that are watching, to be able to join their causes, and then also some volunteer opportunities for you and your family um, out in the community. So Miss Allie. Tell us about you. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, as she said, my name on social media is Allie Virtuous across the board. Uh, Try to make that pretty simple. But um, I have a, um, a show that I live stream twice a week. It's called Making Connections with Allie. And so, you know, it's really about just doing that, making connections. And um, I don't know how much she wants me to get into it yet, but... Um, <laughs> Then I went into coaching. Then I was like, do I want to coach people? Do I, am, am I fitted for this? But I always want to help people. I always want to inspire people to, to do better, to live well, and, you know, not just accept, you know, what is right in front of you. You know, sometimes you have to reach, you know, to get what you want. And so um, I don't know how far you want me to go into it. So I'll stop right there. But <laughs> yeah, just give us a brief introduction, yeah. everybody. And we're going to come back and, and dig a little bit deeper. Thank you, Miss Allie. Thank you so much. Miss Belinda, tell us about you and your organization. Well, good evening, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be on the platform with you, Tiffany, as always. <laughs> Uh, I am Belinda Houston, a.k.a. Doll Hollywood. I am the founder of God's Gift Baby Ministry, where we, um, our organization, um, collect baby items um, from different people um, out in the community. Um, and we are a blessing to take the things that... Um, 
that we are getting from donations to go back out in the community to be a blessing to help unprivileged mothers with baby um, essential items. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Chantel. Okay, my name is Chantel Evans. I am the founder um, of Unique Blessings Nonprofit Organization. I also go by Queen Unique. Um, I am also a licensed cosmetologist. I sit on a board with CVCP, Gun Violence Prevention in Charlotte. Um, and I was born a humanitarian pretty much. Uh, I'm an Aquarius, so I like helping people. Um, it's something that I do naturally. And when I'm not doing it, I don't feel good. So that's a little bit about my why. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. JT. Yeah, how y'all doing? Good evening. It's great to be on this platform. Uh, James J.T. Thompson, Big Woo Radio, uh, community activist. Um, just trying to pour back in uh, to the community, um, however, whenever I can. And to be on a, a show as this tonight with some awesome people um, is, is amazing. And just, you know, uh, sharing a little bit about the why and the purpose and what we're doing. Uh, it's, it's also great. It's nothing like being, you know, sharing a piece of you and a piece of your testimony and what makes your your relevance relevant and understanding who you are and whom you are. So it's a great pleasure tonight to join this panel and these uh, group of people. So, you know, let's get it, man. Let's rock. Thank you so much, JT. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little plug in. So on Thursday, I believe, um, the 26th, so that's 20, yeah, on Thursday, we're going to be launching our all male panel. So we had an all male panel on the Butterfly Visions project before, um, which is we rebranded and renamed uh, my podcast to The Private Room with Tiffany. A um, little bit more adult conversations versus just community conversations. Um, so we're starting the all male panel back up. And of course, JT is going to be on that panel. So thank you so much for always supporting me and everything that I do, JT. And looking forward to that all male panel this Thursday. Um, it'll be the same time, 7:30, live on our Facebook page. So thank you so much for your contribution um, to the private room and all that you do in the community. Up next is Miss Lasandra or AKA L Boogie. How are you? <laughs> You're on mute, sweetheart. Let me see if I can help you unmute. Give me one second. There you go. There you go. Hi there. Thank you so much. I couldn't find the button. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a little nervous. But um, yes, uh, my my social media name is L Boogie. I do comedy, uh, but my real name is Lasandra. Uh, the main things I do is a lot of stuff I do is via social media, but it works in congruent what I do off of social media. So uh, one of the groups that I operate is called Queen City Single Social Network. It's a group for uh, single individuals over the age of 38 years of age who are looking to uh, develop their purpose uh, within their singlehood um, through different activities and connecting. It's not a dating group, but it's a good avenue for people to um, be focused on themselves after getting out of long-term relationships, maybe after going through divorces and to finding out who they are and what things and, and what makes them who they are. And so we do community support work. Um, we do all types of events and just connect with each other and um, they develop friendships. And so right now it's almost 2000 strong. So I'm happy to be doing that and I wear a couple of hats, but I'll keep it on that one for right now. I'm doing, okay, doing okay. no, 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 that's fine. That's great. I actually that's... was going to ask you about that. So what, it's a single group. So what is considered single? Because I hear this question all the time. What do you <laughs> okay. consider single? Um, because yeah, I, I, I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> okay. And, and it varies from person to person. But what I look at as being single is a single individual is an individual who is, does, who is not in any type of emotional relationship or sexual relationship with the individual. Those two things that would actually attach a person to someone. And so gotcha. to me, if you're not involved with anyone, if you don't have an emotional attachment or a sexual attachment, you are a single individual. 
got it, got it. Yes. Well, that mean I'm single. I was about to say that too, Glenda. So I saw that because I'm I'm in your <laughs> I'm in your group, and um, I know that I was in the group. Um, kind of, you know, we were talking about doing some networking things together, and I saw your post today, and I was just like, mm, <laughs> I don't know if I should, you know, because I'm separated. I'm not I'm not attached emotionally, and trying not to right. be that last. So I was like, but I don't know if I should post because I don't know what to do. <laughs> What's the thing about it? What I tell people, and and so sometimes it's a conflict or it can be controversial yeah. for people that are that are separated. How I look yeah. at it is this: that once to me, if you are separated, you're no longer with the individual, you're not sharing the same dwelling. I know North right. Carolina laws look a little different, but right, to me, right. you are able to still be in the group because the group is not a dating group. I'm right. not, you know, so people can get out and connect with individuals because they're on their they're on their journey to being single. So I feel like that journey to find out who you are, that starts once you and that individual decide that you all are parting ways and you all no longer are going to be false in a relationship. So it's okay gotcha. for you to go ahead and start your journey into being single. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll keep that you're, in mind. <laughs> you're welcome. You are look, you are loose, honey. You are loose. <laughs> I was like, I don't need nobody cussing me out. Like, she ain't saying no. that. <laughs> no, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, great, great, great. I'm th- I'm thankful for that platform. Um, like I said, you know, I'm unfortunately I'm separated. And um, I was like, you know, I would like to meet some people and make new friends, but I want to be very careful because, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. Um, So uh, yeah, well, thank you for that. We need that that space to be able to, you know, have that healing place and a place to start networking and kind of, you know, being social. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that space. Um, Thank you. Um, Mr. De Leon, (laughs) you're not next. Okay. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Damon DeLeon, and I actually uh, wear several hats. I'm a former educator with the local school system. Uh, one of the ways I give back to the community is I actually started my own business, which is, which is still in sort of its infancy stages, uh, Dark Lion Self-Defense. As you can see, uh, with this particular business, I actually advocate, I serve an advocate for domestic violence, human trafficking, uh, sexual assault, those sort of things. So I serve as a self-defense instructor for women, men, and children. Uh, also, I serve as a health and wellness editor, freelance editor for a denominational per- uh, publication for the uh, Amy Zion Church, so a health and wellness editor. So I continue in my realm of education in that way. My way of giving back to the community involves those ver- uh, various things. I, have the, I had the privilege to meet uh, Ms. Tiffany, our gracious host, uh, just a few mm-hmm. years ago. And ever since then, we've connected. It's great to be affiliated and create a network with like-minded people and we can all give back and cultivate a better community as a whole. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, So we are going to get into um, your causes specifically. Um, So Miss... Miss Belinda, you were telling us that you do God's gift ministry and really tell us what your story is and why you started God's gift ministry. What is behind that? Well, you know, I hear people, you know, they talk about they doing, um, they going out to help in the community, but you, I never hear them say, that they're going to do things for babies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, well, dog, you don't never hear them saying they going to give out some bottles or some pampers. And just so happened, my daughter had a set of twin girls. Mm-hmm. And I started, um, you know, when you're a grandmother, you start keeping the baby clothes. <laughs> and I'm also washing them. So I know they get good clothes. So I started um, keeping the clothes. I started asking my friends and stuff for um, their baby clothes, you know, from their grandkids. And I started going through them and, you know, wing out the good. Because if I'm not going to put them on my babies, mm-hmm. then I'm not going to mm-hmm. give them out to anybody else to put on their kids. That's just me. Yeah. Um, right. So um, I was a part of the Queen City Dolls. And I went to them um, about it. 
and it took a year to get a name and um i struck out i struck out and we they was by my side not behind me not in front of me but they stood by my side and it would be four years this year that god's what? gift and ministry has been a blessing um out here in the community and Durham and Raleigh and Gastonia here in Charlotte. So we travel. We just don't limit it to just um, Charlotte and Gastonia. We travel when other organizations are having events. They um, call Queen City Dolls or they get in touch with me with God's Gift Baby Ministry and they access us to set up. I've never turned anyone down. God's gift baby ministry is there to provide these um, baby items for these families that need these things, baby beds, baby wipes, nice. uh, whatever they need, clothes. I have some wonderful sponsors. Um that come through for God's gift baby ministry this year. <laughs> I have some heavy hitters. So I am very proud of um, the sponsors that helped out God's gift baby ministry. Um, they said they and glad that they was a part um, of God's gift baby ministry. Whatever God's gift baby ministry need, they I just have to let them know they there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, yes, um, yes. We're getting ready to have uh, another baby giveaway in um, February. So look out for the date. Okay. Pay attention to keep up with that. We also got a fundraiser coming up in March. Mm -hmm. So look out for that. So, you know, we have a lot of things that are getting ready to happen for God's gift baby ministry. Yes, so yes, ma'am. We need everybody to come on and Let's get some things together. Let's let's collaborate. Let's do something real big this year because y'all just don't know the families, the mothers, even the fathers that calls or come when we have a baby giveaway that need pampers and shoes and you know these items for their babies. Mm-hmm. And yes. with um, Mecklenburg Council of Elders, I am a member. I wear a lot of hats too. Lord, we ain't gonna get into all of the hats <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I cannot do it. I, I really cannot really do it. Um, yeah, my mind get all twisted up and everything. I was in a car wreck. So um, I do have um, um, a concussion. But I didn't want to um, not be on this broadcast to let people know what God Gift Baby Ministry do out here in the community. Mm -hmm. So we are a blessing to be a blessing out in the community. Big Woo, I'm ready. <laughs> to, be on that, to be on the radio show as your co-host you know some things that I can't I can't get me on there right now I got to still get my mind together <laughs> no. your baby ministry day in and day out if I don't talk about nothing else Yes, no. yes. Well, no. guess what, Miss Melinda? I'm about to invite you to Miss um, Boogie's group because I know that you're single, <laughs> and she has a <laughs> event coming up on. Wait, 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 wait! How are you <laughs> gonna invite me to the singles group? Why you know I want to be single? Because you just, I'm, I'm about to tell you why I'm adding you to the group. I'm adding you because she has <laughs> an event on April first that is going to be helping some kids. <laughs> Yeah. We networking. <laughs> she said she don't want to be single. She just want to help. Yeah. 
Oh, that's just what well, I, yeah. you don't have to accept it, but I'm going to connect you and Miss Lissandra because she has an event on April 1st. It's called Spring Forward in Love Project that her group is doing, um, and it's and going to be spreading the love for Easter. So I'm going to let Miss um, Miss Lissandra tell us about her, um, her why, and about this event that she has going on, and how you, um, and how you got started. You want to expand on that a little bit more? Okay. Um, I'll say my my why I believe is tied directly to God's purpose for me in my life. Uh, I wanted to be able to use my time, my talent, and my resources and my gifts to be able to make a difference um, while I'm here. And I feel like we all, I think I just did something on this a couple of days ago that I feel like God gives us all a purpose, but sometimes we just end up in a mode of just existing because we don't know what we're living for. And so once I realized what my purpose was in life, I started taking, finding ways to really make an impact in doing that. And to me, when you do that, it doesn't have to be anything large some, it, because again, to me, your purpose is something that is gratifying for, to you in the inside. Um, that's what your purpose is for. It, 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 it satisfies you because you know you're satisfying what God put you here for. Mm-hmm. And so- with the group, what I wanted to do was really help people try to find out what their purpose is through different activities and by building those relationships with other single individuals. So to me, doing the community support um, component of the group was very important. Um, And also for different ways, because I don't think sometimes singles look at how they can go from being a single individual Mm -hmm. to possibly a person in a relationship. And so we look about how God divinely orchestrated relationships a lot of times, it was through people serving other individuals. And so I feel like at the root of everything is getting people to learn how to love one another, but also how to um, encourage and uplift one another by doing charity work. Mm -hmm. And so with that component, I believe people that have never given before, they really do enjoy being in that mode of where they're having the opportunity to explore different ways of giving. Um, mm-hmm. So I just don't try to do just one. So we do different ones. Um, to uh, to Miss Belinda's uh, cause, um, that is one I enjoy as well. So last year for Valentine's Day, we went to, uh, it was a refuge house here in Charlotte uh, where they have teen mothers uh, who are underage who give birth to, to babies. And sometimes they can't keep their children and sometimes mm-hmm. they can, but the, the refuge place gives them opportunity to bond with their babies for a while and to figure out if they want to uh, take that road into being a parent or if they're ready for parenthood. And so mm-hmm. what we did is we made a lot of Valentine's Day. Uh, we had over like 200 uh, Valentine's Day bags that members brought. And we took those bags to, uh, to different organizations around Charlotte and we gave them out. So the mothers got one to just to spread the love because they just didn't want to give them to the toddlers or the children. We wanted to make sure the, the, the mothers felt love too on that day. So we gave those out. Um, we did, uh, we took hair supplies to other organizations that sometimes there's a need for those for African-American children. Mm-hmm. So I tried to make sure that I kind of fill in the holes and I ask the organization specifically, what is the need that you have? I just don't want to come and just think, assume I know what the need is, but what specifically is it is that you're lacking in your organization that we can try to, you know, fill in the gaps in it and meet. And so mm-hmm. with the with the love project, um, what I'm doing there is I ask all the members to uh, donate um, donate items towards that. So for feminine hygiene um, items and uh, make, write encouraging, uh, write put an index card with an encouraging word or something mm-hmm. to uh, to those individuals who might be experiencing homeless. And so we're going to go to a woman's homeless shelter that also, also houses children. So okay. we're going to be doing diapers and all of those needful items that they might go low in. So that's okay. what we're trying to do there and just not, you know, right. just take stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh-huh. I like that. That is, that's amazing. Um, I've been a domestic violence um, advocate for Mm -hmm. over six years now. And um, that's something I'm really passionate about is making sure that not only are we connecting with the parents, but connecting with the children as well, because um, as their parents go through 
um, domestic violence or homelessness or even joblessness, all, all of those things that parents go through, it affects our children. Um, so it's really important that we do connect with the children to let them know that they're not being left behind and that it's not just their parents that are receiving the help, but that we're helping the children too, because they're just as traumatized when they go through, um, you know, those situations, whether it's homelessness, domestic violence, um, you know, assault, violence in the family, so forth and so on. So I really appreciate you for for, for doing that. Um, I'm supposed to be out of town that day, but if I'm not, I'm there. Okay. And if I am out of town, I'm going to make sure that I, I donate and I'll connect with Miss Belinda and see okay. um, what we can do as well to um, to contribute to that event. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Uh, De Leon, and I, I like saying your name, if you can tell. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, I, so I know that you and I connected because I really wanted to help domestic violence um, victims that were getting out of their abusive relationships learn how to defend themselves. Um, because unfortunately, a lot of uh, victims are feel like they're helpless and that they're defenseless. And so we wanted to um, raise some awareness around self-defense and what that looks like and how to do that safely. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's how you and I met. And I was really appreciative of you kind of jumping right in and being an advocate for self-defense, um, mm -hmm. especially for uh, victims of domestic violence, but just women in general, um, even though you teach men, men, women, you know, adults and children. So tell us, how did you get into this and what is your why? Uh, actually, since a child, you know, we all have those uh, passionate moments and those dreams where, which I like to tell people dreams are just uh, visions that um, we're all unable to, we're impregnated with at a, a very young age. And you all, we always envision ourselves action, acting out scenes from films or living out a particular uh, fantasy that we have. So ever since I was a small child, I've always been a fan of uh, action films and that sort of thing. And my mother got me involved. My parents got me involved in karate, which some of you have probably done some, something like that similar. So it started as a young child, the desire to actually do something that uh, was, was very creative. I had a passion for it. And she saw that it kind of helped me develop constructive behavior and not destructive behavior. And, you know, I still had my, my time during my adolescence where I was a knucklehead like we all have. And everything. But, <laughs> It, re it really became personal for me. So as I began to train as a young man and it was a hobby, a recreational hobby of mine, I said, why not give back? Because I knew of uh, several women that were in my life, regarding, whether it were family members uh, or just friends of family members, et cetera, or other loved ones. The one that stuck really close to me was my oldest sister's uh, best friend that I had known. We had, I saw her as my sister as well, was murdered uh, in a domestic violence situation. So, and I was a teenager when that happened. So as I became uh, older, I said, you know, one way to give back is actually can contribute by training women and small children to protect themselves. And it's not like one of those cookie cutter businesses, you go to a shopping square and you go in and see the kids in the nice little cute uniforms and they're kicking the ball and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Not, you know, not to down any particular art. This is more so, uh, situational awareness, uh, how to defend yourself in certain situations, but the first mode of self-defense is your mind. I also actually train from a legal aspect. You know, I don't consider myself the toughest guy in the world. I'm a peacemaker. I'll be quick to just resolve something with my mind, but people have to understand we can't be so quick to retaliate a certain way that's going to land us in prison. Uh, mm -hmm. There's legal ramifications behind every action or reaction. Um, I think I see that there has been a surge in a lot of gun purchases, a lot of uh, concealed carry classes that people want to take. And I tell people, and some of you may disagree, and that's fine. But that's not always the answer. That's not always mm -hmm. the gun or the weapon doesn't kill the people. A cold heart does. Right. Um, sometimes, even when you're in a self-defense situation, you have to be able to justify yourself in a court of law. You have to, you know, it's good to know your state laws when it comes to carrying firearms. It's good to know your state laws when it comes to understanding what the stand your ground law is or what the castle doctrine is or understanding certain things like that. So I train not just from a physical aspect of being able to survive or escape a situation, but I train from a legal aspect to actually educate my um, parishioners about the law. Um, there's reciprocity in certain states. 
And that what that simply means is uh, North Carolina resident, uh, you know, let's say South Carolina has reciprocity with North Carolina, Virginia has reciprocity with Tennessee. So whenever you go to a certain state, whether you're carrying a firearm or if you find yourself in a situation legally, understand or have a general idea of the laws of that particular state. Um, January is national, the month, current month is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. uh, April is National Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And October, which everything goes on in October, but <laughs> it's also National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And between 2011 and 2021, North Carolina is actually number eight in the U.S. when it comes to human trafficking numbers that have escalated. When it comes mm -hmm. to, uh, it's also number 14 in the U.S. when it comes to uh, the homicides resulting from domestic violence. It mm -hmm. is uh, number uh, uh, 22 in the U.S. when it comes to crimes resulting from uh, sexual assault, be it rape or a domestic situ situation. Usually uh, sexual violent acts, uh, studies show, are resulting from individuals that you may know, an individual or individuals you may know at least 73% of the time, if I'm not mistaken. And these are the numbers that are actually are conclusive as of 21. So 2022's numbers have not been released as of yet. We just got into 23. So whatever current year we're in, we can only always get up to the date of the previous year due to uh, federal um, uh, stats and numbers that have been released at that time. So mm -hmm. the, the three times in the year that my business really does the most or has the most success, I'll say, I do it you know, I try to do it 12 months out of the year. That's something that should be brought uh, to the forefront 12 months out of the year. January, April, and October, uh, you know, there's always a surge of interest to take classes at that point. So again, my business is in its infancy stages. I'm looking to get it grow. I'm looking to create more of a media presence. And that's going to come along with the more sessions I've done. I've had it since 2019. However, COVID, and I was going strong in 2019 and started it. In 2020, COVID negative, negatively affected my business like it did a good number. Mm -hmm. uh, my type of business involves physical interaction, and I do have a group chat. I do. I have. I have, I have um, a website in the construction stages where I actually share information, uh, scenarios, uh, information as far as regarding how do you handle this, understand what does this particular law mean, and also in addition to that, I also sell items. There is a merchandise uh, market behind what I sell when it comes to things such as pepper gel spray. Uh, tools that women, men and women can carry on themselves and also small children. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a big advocate of that. So it's a form of ministry in and of itself. I've seen uh, churches that actually may, may have in place some type of health and wellness ministry. It's very few and far between, but in the black community, it's not something that we collectively have addressed in our religious circles. Okay. Uh, so with something like this, I pitched to several churches and I've gotten minimal support. Everyone likes the idea, but no one is actually proactively uh, supporting when it right. comes to taking the time to do that. And mm -hmm. many of us have a sense of passivity when it comes to understanding how to protect ourselves. And mm -hmm. so we have to be proactive. You know, sometimes the best form of defense is to take offense. You have to take initiative. So my vision right. involves uh, people from all walks of life, people from all ethnicities, uh, primarily women, because you all, uh, Six, uh, close to 78% of domestic and sexual crimes, women are the victims of 78% of those. And there is a percentage of men that suffer as well. A lot of people have the sad mistake that men can't be uh, assaulted. Men, it's not assault if, it, if, a, if a, a woman hits a man or whatever the case would be, a man is a man. And that's, that's nothing could be further from the truth. So right. as I continue to grow, it's great to be a part of a, a, a network of people and to establish the camaraderie that I'm looking to establish today, in addition to you, Tiff, and mm -hmm. uh, we can actually get get the ball rolling in that in that area. And I'll be happy to share uh, contact information, et cetera, going forward. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, yes, as a, a, a survivor, because I don't call myself a victim anymore. So, as a survivor mm -hmm. and a thriver um, of domestic violence and sexual assault myself, um, I definitely understand when you get those requests around those around those times um, because it definitely is something that um, we need to teach our women but also our young girls um, mm -hmm. I always do scenarios with my children well you know if I go into the store and you're sitting in the car someone comes up to the car what are you going to do or you know if you're walking <laughs> right. home 
and someone grabs you or tries to, you know, pull up on you, what are you going to do? I've been doing that with them since they were three, three, four years old, um, just for the simple fact that I've been attacked in person um, before. And so it's really important um, to, to not only help women and men, but also children too, yeah. um, to be able to protect themselves. And people are not Unfortunately, people are not um, using their hands anymore. They're using guns and knives um, now. They're not. They're not doing back. You know what we used to do. Right. <laughs> I don't know everybody's age on here, but I'm pretty sure we're all around the same age group. And they're not. They're not throwing hands anymore. They're shooting people. One of my my daughter's um, friends at her high school got killed yesterday, and she came home telling me about it. And it, that that's very close to home. You know, someone that my child knows now has been murdered. Um, so we, we really, really need to to come together and and work with our community because things are not things are not good out here. I totally understand, you know, people doing the concealed carry classes and making sure that they're armed and so forth. Um, I know several friends who who own guns, several guns. I own a couple of myself so I definitely get it you know protecting yourself but you're right that's not always the should be the first line of defense um and so I really appreciate the, what you do you talk first about the mental part of it and um you know uh raising awareness situational awareness um being being mindful of your surroundings and so forth you go into those things before you start talking the physical um so I definitely appreciate that about the way you do things um with uh with dark lion so thank you so much um definitely want to get together with you and plan something um COVID threw us off when we were trying to plan stuff before um but definitely want to do that um again with you because i think it's really important and not just for sexual assault or domestic violence month but throughout the year you know having those platforms for people to be able to learn how to defend themselves the old-fashioned way without pulling out a gun or a knife <laughs> So um, yes, thank you and so if much. You have, if, you have, if you have to use uh, deadly force, just make sure you can articulate that in the court of law why you did it. Right, right. Know, when know I did what a... to, know what to do when the police arrive. Well, I, I educate you on uh, people on all of that. Know what to say, yeah. what not, to, what not to say. Yeah. Right, right. I know when I took a concealed carry class, that was one of the things he kept saying over and over again. If you're going to use it. You better know what to do with it, and you better know how to how to you know justify it. So uh, right. yes, right. point taken. Point taken. Right. <laughs> um, that leads us um, leads us into Miss Chantel because we spoke about trafficking and domestic violence, and Miss Chantel has a very unique story, um, and she is a uh, human trafficking um, advocate. And so, Miss Chantel, please share your story with us and tell us your why. Yeah, sure. Um, Tiffany, thank you, uh, first of all. So it is a unique story and it's a lot to the story. So I'll try to be as brief as I can. Um, long story short, I was introduced to human trafficking when my daughter went missing from high school. So I have lived experience. By the time we found her, we found that she was in human trafficking. Um, I was largely responsible for the recovery of my daughter. Um, and so it, it allowed me to see the resources that we had and that we did not have. Um, instead of me giving so much energy into being upset, focusing on a problem, I decided to link up with the city and the county and um, DSS and, and whoever else was involved, school system and everybody, for one, to bring awareness and for two, to see what can we do about this collectively um, to prevent this from happening and also to educate our students and our youth. Um, and families um, in the midst of that, she, I like to tell people that um, our family pretty much had became a part of human trafficking. Um, I'll say out loud that once you are in human trafficking, it's not one of those things where it goes away. Um, you grow with it and you learn to accept it. And so nowadays, um, every time I you know, meet someone, if I'm out, or call to an engagement and I say, well, my daughter was a victim, their eyes like get shocked, like what? Um, and just to see the expression on their face to me is bothering because it lets me know that one, we are so far behind for believing that this, this does happen and it does happen to people that look just like me. My daughter, um, I like to, to really, really horn down on when we're doing education and enrichment, the difference between human trafficking and kidnapping. It's a lot of 
you know, people describing kidnapping and it is, or it's, it's not, well, they're saying human trafficking is kidnapping, but it's not. Um, most of the time, and thank you, the, I don't know how to say his name. Tiffany, you say it so well, but our last speaker. Uh, De, De Leon. De Leon. Okay. Yeah. I, have a, I have a heavy accent. Too. So De Leon, um, you did a great job. Thank you for those statistics. Um, I like to add, even with the statistics, one thing that I find troubling is that most cases with human trafficking is not really reported. Um, and if it is reported is in a black and brown community, um, if we have, you know, commonly we have a lot of children that do like runaways and things like that. And again, from lived experience, I looked at how um, the officials handled these stories. I even went as far as looking at the write-up in the stories, you know, how were they describing these? What happened? Um, I did some contrast and comparing as well. Um, to see that when you looked at for black and brown children, that it was little to no resources. Um, I've had, uh, I had some interesting things. Um, I've had officers, police officers themselves say, why do you keep coming across state? Like, you know, you look like you're a decent woman and she'll, she'll be fine. This is what some people do. I thank God that I never gave up on my daughter. Um, I was told when she went missing that she was deceased. I refuse to believe that. And we brought her home alive. We did get her out of Charlotte eventually. Um, and in Charlotte, it is a heavy problem. It's something that we don't talk about. I actually met, met Tiffany in the midst of this. I think it was back in like 2016, 2017. Um, she reached out to, to me when she heard about our story. It hit the media. Um, and she offered her services. Uh, and so I like to tell people how pandemic actually happened before the pandemic. And so um, in 2020, I said, you know what? Um, I'm not going to keep on asking for these things. Let's bring it to Charlotte. I had worked with other organizations outside of Charlotte. That was wonderful. Um, took a holistic approach to our hill. And that was the best thing that we had when it comes to like mental health um, resources. And, you know, I'm not one who's going to medicate and, and watch my child sleep and see her just go. So um, we, we, we provide nowadays, I, I like more self-sufficient programs. So we have workforce development in our nonprofit. Um, we have enrichment workshops. We provide uh, just about whatever we can. And if we can provide it, we'll look for those resources that you know have what we don't. Um, it's still a whole bunch of work that needs to be done. We we have a lot of people that's interested in the conversation, but we don't have a lot of hands on deck. Again, like I said, when it comes to black and brown children, I also like to advocate for our males nowadays. Um, it's when when I'm hearing human trafficking in all my education classes and all my things that I go to, I always hear she 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 her 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 her. It's very seldom that we have anyone bringing light to us to say men and boys are victims too. Um, I like to look at the whole family. It doesn't just affect the, the victim. It affects the entire family. I am a grandparent now. Um, so my daughter did inherit two children from human trafficking, which I love with all my life. Um, so it's good things that can come out of it. But like I said, it becomes a part of you because nowadays my daughter, we're, we're having a conversation about how would we talk to them about, you know, who their father is and what happened and how they got here. You know, so this is the thing where it happened, but it doesn't stop it. You know, talking about mental health, she's, you know, tried to commit suicide a couple of times. She is my youngest child. So this, of course, had um, impact on her brother and sister as well. It changed the dynamics of our whole entire family. We relocated to North Carolina in 2010, and we were escaping gun violence from Baltimore. Um, at 19 years old, I lost my children's father to gun violence. I talked to him on the phone while he was murdered. So I have a lot of lived experience. My mother, um, she is a domestic violence survivor. So I am, I seen that as a child, um, so much to the point I thought it was normal. I thought, um, you know, that daddies beat mommies, you know, and that's what daddies did. And I never went to school and talked about it. So I make sure when I'm working with my youth that we have these real, real life conversations, I make sure I provide a safe space for them. 
Um, and I am intentional about making it their space with respect to their parents that do have some backlash sometimes because parents want to get in, they want to know. And sometimes the youth, they're just not ready to have that conversation because of what's going to happen. You know, we say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And, you know, sometimes parents are not ready to hear some of the truth, even down to me with my daughter. I don't know everything that happened when she was out but I know enough to know that it was, I needed to do something about it. Um, and I, I'm grateful for the support that we do have and the work that we're doing. Um, sometimes I want to stop, but it, I have tried to stop. And when I stop, it's like, it's one less person that's passionate about it. And this, this is, it's become my ministry. And I like to tell people that um, human trafficking, sexual assault and domestic violence, it picked me. I didn't pick it. Um, but I accept it and it is a divine assignment. And so as long as I keep that at the forefront, I know that all things are possible because I, and I also told the Lord, I said, look, if you bring, when I got that call that said she was deceased and we, a flyer was already done for her candlelight vision, I, I got on my knees and I said, God, you can't do this. You can't, you can't take her from me. And I, I said that if you if you give her back to me and she's alive, I promise you, I won't never stop. I'll I'll come out of my shell. I'm kind of shy. Um, I'll come out of my shell and I'll do what it is that I need to do. Um, not for me, but for you. And so with that, everything's been blessed. And the name of our organization is Unique Blessings. Um, I was cosmetologist before this, and so we had a salon. But all of this, I. Uh, had to close the salon down and really just um, do that thing called faith, strength, courage, and wisdom. And here I am today with y'all beautiful people. So thank you. And want to know more, just look us up um, and we'll be happy to talk to you more. I actually would like to hook up with all of you guys um, beyond this, because when people always say, well, what is it that you all need? I like to tell people when you're talking to a family or you're talking to a survivor, of, I call it survivor of circumstances because a lot of things happen in domestic violence and human trafficking and sexual assault. So I just like to say a survival of circumstances. You think about a person that's been stripped from with everything. Everything is gone, the internal space and the external space. So even if it's just a phone call, if it's just a, I had one lady, she brought a whole bunch of cards and we were able to give them out to families that we work with. And just to see them open the cards and see their face just from a card and words of encouragement, it does change your life. And it does stop that voice of suicide um, and give you that I can do spirit. And even though those person don't know me, somebody thought enough about me to stop and give a card. So whether it's a card, a word of encouragement, volunteer, mental, whatever, um, we need everything. So we need each other. And that's pretty much my why. Wow, that is such a blessing. So let you know, this is Belinda Houston with God's Gift Baby Ministry. So you make sure you get my information and yes, you can contact because um, we're going to help each other. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you. No and I want to commend you for your bravery and your courage yes. um, in this, because I know that was difficult. Uh, one thing I didn't get to share, because like I said, I wear a lot of hats, but they kind of coincide with other things. But I am a mental health advocate. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for years, ever since my son. Uh, my son has a severe persistent mental health challenge, and uh, we've dealt with suicide numerous times. <laughs> so I can definitely... Um, help with any resources when it comes to adolescents uh, trying to get them in the system um, and uh, resources, depending on what county it's, it's in, um, I can give you some assistance there with people to contact and just ways to uh, help them flourish and to get over that. But it's that's definitely a journey. And so I definitely want to help partner you with that in that aspect. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And you know, and to say I am a... Um, a child of domestic violence also. So, wow. you know, it's stuff that I don't talk about. Mm -hmm. But I did share with Tiffany um, at a group um, that um, I was going to with her. And um, yeah, that gets pretty deep because you really yeah. don't talk about that. But um, I talked about mine and who is happy to talk about it anytime is me. Yeah. So um I don't mind sharing. 
Yes, and I appreciate it. And just to add on to, you know, the, the the being a childhood survivor, one thing that I'm learning, I actually took like a year from doing like community events and everything and just dove into education and prioritize our health and our family. Um, but one thing I learned is that uh, recently that a conversation came up with my mother and I, and because of the things that happened to my daughter, it made me ask her some questions that I probably didn't understand until it happened to one of my children. And just to say long story short, it put it put a damper in our relationship. Um, I, and I'm learning that we all heal at different spaces. Um, and so I'm allowing her that space, but I'm also living in my truth and not 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 acknowledging things that happen. I mean, and when you talk about domestic violence and sexual assault, all these things have heavy impact. I'm single. And so one thing I sit and I think, and I'm like, I, the deeper I get into this work, the, the more I'm okay with being single. But I also Me know too. that that's remnants. <laughs> I also know that that's like remnants, of course, too, from the past. And so now that I acknowledge that, it's like, okay, now let's work through that. But I also enjoy my time to myself because I've never seen my mother take time to be healthy for herself and prioritize herself. Yeah. And it's something that I'm doing. And I think it's kind of making her, yeah. you know, a little bit envied at a little bit or not be quite understanding. Um, and I'm intentional about my healing and because my thing is what I learned when my daughter was missing. And when she did come back and the suicidal ideations and attempts, the, 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 the sicker I was, it seemed like my daughter wasn't getting better. At the moment that I stopped and I said, okay, I need to heal so that I can be healed to help her and show her, even if she's just looking at me, everything else, it started to just come together, you know, and, and now it's kind of spreading through my offspring. So I am that generational curse breaker and that yes. has ramifications as well when you look at your family. So um, I'm excited about this. I was a little bit nervous about this, Tiffany. You know, I'm kind of an introvert. I'd be like, no, I did a one-on-one, but I ain't about to do no, <laughs> you know. So, but um, I, I'm blessed that this happened. So I I got I give gratitude and and thank you all so much for just being support, really, because even a helper needs help. <laughs> yes. And look how we're all connected. We all got shared experiences that we can all pull from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I've always heard that saying, I didn't understand until I got older. Even though sometimes it doesn't, it, it hits you different when you hear when it says all things work together for the good. Mm. And you don't think sometimes the pain that you go through sometimes mm. will put you in position to, to use that to help change people's lives. Yes. You know, uh, the fact that you go through the things that you go through, how God uses our struggles mm -hmm. and our challenges to make us greater. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, you know, for, for what we've been through and the things that we've been doing, the things that we've learned from our experiences, you know, we, we, we bless people, you know, we yeah. really are. We really are blessed. Yes. yes. I, um, I truly believe that when, when people say that, um, God doesn't put on you more than you can handle. Mm. Um, I truly believe that, um, because, you know, I have a story to tell, you have a story to tell, yeah. all of us have a story to tell, and we are all, doing what we're doing because we have some kind of experience attached to it mm -hmm. um and the people with lived experiences are the best mentors the best coaches um the best advocates because no one can understand human trafficking like a mother whose child has been trafficked no one can understand the effects of sexual assault like a person who has been through it um no one can understand the the depths of domestic violence if they've never been in a domestic violence relationship you know, so, you know, all of the causes that we are talking about, you know, mental health awareness and so forth, um, that all comes from someone or somewhere deep inside of us. Um, you know, we might not be the direct victim, but we might, we have some kind of experience to, to, for that to be something that we are dedicating our lives to doing, to helping um, other people. I truly believe that. Just like I believe every movie has some truth to it. I know that all advocates, there, there's some truth and there's some experience within them that makes them do what they do and go hard like they do. Um, so that's one of the, the things that I cover in my book that I'm putting out is that, you know, really looking deep inside and finding 
what that why is for you. Why are you doing this? It can't be about money. It can't be about, you know, popularity and so forth and so on. It really has to be about your dedication to the community. It has to be about helping other people. Um, and it really, it can be therapy for a lot of people. I know it was for me when I became an advocate, um, you know, talking about domestic violence, you know, from my, from my last marriage and just really being able to share my story, which I'm sure is the same for all of you. I know, you know, Belinda is very passionate about that. She can tell you're very passionate about it. all of us on here are very passionate about what we're doing. And it all starts, it all starts inside. It's, it, there's some, something deep inside us that is giving us this power and this motivation and our why, our reason for what we do. Um, so I really love that everybody is finding ways, ways to connect and help one another. Um, and I'm just really blessed to be able to be connected to all of you and that, that a few of you, you know, reached out to me, like um, Miss Lissandra, she was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. Yes. I want to tell my why, you know, and then me reaching out to, you know, the rest of you and saying, hey, are you ready to tell your why? Because um, I just, I just think it's really important because there's a lot of organizations out here that are not practicing in good faith and are not doing their causes for the right reasons. Um, and so I think it's really important for us to highlight those that are. And I wouldn't have anybody on this platform that I didn't know was doing it for the right reasons and from, and from their heart. Um, so just want to applaud y'all for, um, for being here and telling your why. And because part of your why is really is really talking about yourself too. It's 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 opening up to show who you are as a person, and that's not easy. That's not that's not ever easy. Um, it gets easier, but it's not easy to you know be vulnerable and to open up and talk about you know those those personal experiences, um, especially when they happen to our children as well. Um, I can't imagine what Miss Chantel has been through. I've watched it. I've watched her story. I've met her daughter. Um, you know, I've, I've been there to try to support, but I'm not in her shoes and can't imagine being in that place. Um, so I, I really appreciate all of you for sharing your, your inside stories. Um, Miss uh, Allie, she um, has a unique position with her podcast and um, making connections and having another platform, you know, for people to be able to share their businesses, share their journey, share their story. Um, but I do know that that comes from a personal place too. So Ms. Allie, tell us about um, making connections and what your why is. Listen, I've been trying to hold on. I'm like, what am I have to sneak off and dry my face? Listen, <laughs> y'all are really, uh, uh, thank you, Tiffany, for being here. And thank you all for being able to tell your stories. And, you know, I tell everybody that when I was on third shift, I used to like, list, like to listen to Delilah. And she would do like um, uh, dedications, you know, people would call in and they would uh, read stories about people being deployed, family members being sick and things like that. And, you know, and then I love music. Music, you know, can calm you down when life is feeling overwhelmed or it can like, like at three o'clock in the morning when you wish you were home in bed to help you get through the night. So there's a lot of different things that were going on on that show. And I was like, man, I'd love to do something like that. And so, but I'm really shy person. <laughs> and so, and then I liked it because it was behind the scenes, right? And so, um, but then I realized it was really the stories that got me, you know, not just the music, but it was the stories that people were telling, you know, how they felt about a family member dying, a family member being deployed. And so I was like, that's really it. I, I like, I like stories. I like to know why people do what they do. I like to know how people survive what they do. Um, I've been in moments in life and I just didn't think anything was ever going to change. And so, um, you know, that's where making connections and that's that making those connections, making connections with resources, making connections with a mindset, making connections with just whatever you need to get through life. I mean, because we've had the therapists on who've talked about sexual assault. We've had the people who have survived and thrived from, you know, domestic violence. And I've seen a lot of that in my life. 
And, you know, I'm from the generation, probably older than you, Tiffany, <laughs> from the <laughs> generation where it was like, whatever happens stay in the house stays in the house. Mm-hmm. It's your house, your cousin's house, your friend's house, whatever happens stays in. And so a lot of that stuff is on the inside of you and you don't have an outlet to talk. And so I was just like, man, I want to free some people. I want them to let them know you can tell your story. I want them that you can have resources. It doesn't matter where you are right now. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you decided to be in a domestic violence situation, but then you changed your mind and decided it, this is not for me. This is not healthy. This is not what I want anymore. I realize there's more to me. You know, you can get out. So I like to let people know that there is a way out. God always gives us a way of escape you know, and sometimes you just need to hear somebody else's story Mm -hmm. that they survived through it. And then some people feel like, well, when I get out, then what? But then I can have people like Tiffany on the show who says, look, I have a family, I work, I'm an advocate in the community, I'm helping others, I'm good, I'm happy, you know? And so I just think that those stories are so important. Had people, single mothers who talked about you know, cars getting possessed there and their child had to walk to work and to school. It was a struggle, but now they have their business owners. And so it's really just about encouraging people, um, just letting them know they have options. And that's why even getting into the financial arena, because, you know, still we miss out on a lot of options. And I know back in the day to invest and to do things, it it costs like five, ten thousand dollars. But now I want people to know that you have options. You can invest starting at $25. You know, you have to stop just thinking about t- now and think about your future. Start um, teaching your children. And I like what a couple of you said, it's, it's about the whole family, mm-hmm. you know, because when, you, when you're helping the mother to heal, the father to heal, because you're right, there's a lot of single fathers out there. I've seen a lot of that and they were struggling and they couldn't get the help they needed because- the resources mm-hmm. work for women. So right. it's just a lot. You know, I could go on and on about this yeah. line, but I'm just, you know, sometimes I don't always get to the event. I'm not at, in the community, but I always share anything that I know that is going on in the community that can help somebody else along the way. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when we start our show, you see flyers, you know, and it's about the things that are in, happening in the community for the weekend or coming up, because I want you to know I want you to know if you're a cancer survivor, that there's a strong will survivor who has prayer every Saturday at 9 a.m. If you're going through that and you need, even if you're a, a family member, like you said, maybe it's not you, but you're directly involved, you can get on this prayer line and get some comfort, some peace. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. all we need sometimes. Like you said, just need a, a hand. We just need to know somebody else is going through and we're not by ourselves. Yes, yes. Um, you've definitely been a great um, resource for me and a great um, opportunity for me to spread awareness about um, BBP Project Safe Haven, which is my organization that helps um, domestic violence victims escape um, abusive homes. Um, we provide emergency shelter for domestic violence victims. So I really appreciate you for doing that. Um, definitely think you have some connections right here that would be perfect for your um, for your podcast to be able to talk about um, different issues and different things that are going on in the community. Um, and I know that you know a couple of our um, our guests on tonight, like JT. Um, so I really appreciate you being able to help people like myself that want to raise awareness about our organizations and um, being able to help others, but also business owners as well. You've had business owners, you've had musicians, you've had artists, you've had all kinds of people on your show. Um, and so you have definitely helped a lot of people, um, not only raise awareness about their causes and about their, you know, their missions and their why, but also about their businesses as well. Um, so definitely a great, great platform to, um, for everybody if they have a business or they have an organization or they have a cause or they have a purpose to reach out to making connections with Allie because Allie, as you can see, she's very soft-spoken, but she's, um, she has a a huge network um, of people that she's helped and that, um, you know, looks to her to, to, to be able to uh, promote their brand um, and so forth. So as well as JT who we're going to talk to next. So uh, thank you so much, Miss Allie. I appreciate that. And um, I'm going to hopefully 
be able to connect you with everyone one-on-one um, -on -one so that they can get on on your um your podcast because I think everybody on here would be perfect for you for your Amen. platform. <laughs> Welcome anytime. Yes, thank you so much, um, Mr. JT. Last but but never least, how are you doing tonight? I'm just saying, man. I gotta follow all of that. That's yeah. amazing. Wow, it's tough. It's tough, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But uh, JT, as I mentioned earlier, he's going to be on our all-male panel, which is going to be um, debuting, as I call it, on Thursday. <clears throat> all-male panel of all men that are business owners, community leaders, and you're going to be one of the men on that um, on that panel that we're going to be doing on Thursday. So I appreciate you. Um, you're just like uh, just like Ali. You have an amazing network and a a tremendous <laughs> um, following of people, of artists, business owners, uh, you know, whatever you can think, JT, whenever I'm needing some something for somebody on the podcast or I'm needing a connection or something like that, you are one of the first people I reach out to. Um, you're also an author now. Um, and you are a poet as well, which uh, that was a surprise to me when you told me you were putting out a book. I'm like, wait, big woo okay all right you write a book you do it some poetry so um you've branched out and you've grown since i've known you um so you're not only helping other artists but now you are an artist as well um and i'm just i'm just very appreciative of you you and your um and your beautiful wife for, for sharing your talents and sharing um your time with the community so please tell us about you tell us your why and um how you what 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 made you get into this so I'm gonna give you a piece of me in this moment. I'm compelled to do something. So Father God, we're gonna come in prayer. Father God, we see and feel the movement and the shift right now. The testimonies and the moments and the thoughts that are being shared at this moment, Lord, allow you to use and continue to use these vessels and use all of me up in this moment, Lord, as less of me, more of you. As we in the midst of a powerful moment, powerful movement, a shift in the atmosphere, and I'm just grateful to be a part of. Lord, as I speak and as I give a, a piece of my story, Lord, let your will continue to be done and move through this show as you will move magnanimously through this entire show, Lord. Let me be equally as effective and impactful and as inspirational as those that have came before me. And all these things I ask in your precious name, amen. Amen, thank you I will, for that. <clears throat> I will say, I'm touched by each person that has spoke here tonight. Um, when you talk about being gifted, when you talk about purpose, when you talk about something being put in your spirit, each one of you exemplify that. And your stories are designed different with a different why and a different purpose. Let me give you a peace of mind. You're talking about cut from a different cloth. You're talking about at six months old before I could ever talk, I was challenged with a hernia. We're talking about at 14 years old, I lost my sight and my balance. Hmm. Three days, three different hospitals. And finally at the third hospital, they found that I was living and born with something that never was detected. So you wanna talk about how God covers you. You wanna talk about, I played football, basketball, ran track, every kind of contact sport that could happen. But yet, in any moment, I could have took a hit that would have took me out. But yet, God has something different. So when I say God, and when I talk about my faith, it hits different for me. Because God covered me before I even discovered who he was. He loved on me before I could even know the element of what love meant. So when I'm talk, when I speak tonight, it comes from a different place. Obedience, faith, just the strength to know that even when you don't know what God has for you, he has already positioned you. He has already spoke your name in rooms that you ain't even been in yet. He has already yeah. designed a faith within you that you didn't even know you had yet. And yet when you discover it, you're like, oh my God, I didn't know. But yet it, was, it wasn't time. It was on God's time. And then when you discovered it, woo -wee, the devil became big man. Because he didn't know what to do. Because now you were exhibiting something totally different. Mm -hmm. As I continue to move through life, God said, if you be obedient, 
and you do as I ask of you, I will give you everything that you want. Well, my dream was to always be in radio. But first and foremost, God said, I have something for you to do. I need you to work with a community of people that need you. But little did I realize, as much as, they, as God said they needed me, I needed them too. And so for the last 27 years, I've been working with kids and adults with special needs. But they didn't know that they were ministering to me too. And I needed that. And then eight years ago, birth Big Woo Radio because I met Corey Woods mm -hmm. in the matter of fact of the way the Big Woo Radio was born. Born to serve the people, for the people, by the people. Mm -hmm. To get into our communities, to pour back into our black and brown, but our people, period. Mm -hmm. Because our people have been hurting. Our people have been through distress. Our people have been in need. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like Miss Belinda said, you know what I'm saying? Our babies. When they first start out, nobody was talking about supplying them and giving them what they need from milk, diapers, everything. They needed that too. Mm -hmm. So everybody that was designed, no, it was designed for something different. So now, off of Big Blue Radio is now eight years old. I'm able to be a part of a couple of special things like the Men of Zion here locally. We serve. We give back to the homeless. We go and we speak, you know, the elderly community. We're pouring back into them. I'm also a part of Men on a Mission. Every month, we're going to clean a community, put pride and joy back in the community. We ask nothing of the community other than, please whisper a, whisper a prayer of safety, of solitude, of security, of coverage as we move through. That is our ministry. That is our ministering to the community. So all of these things, and that's just some of the some of the things. That's just some of the things, but that is some of the things that was put in my spirit to put out here tonight. Being a mentor to our young men. Because I grew up in a time where uh one of one of y'all said, Oh, you know, what go on in here don't need to be told. Not understanding that what was manifesting inside of us, you know what I'm saying, was something of a different type of mental illness. Yeah. of a different type of mental wear and tear. We had already been oppressed as a people. And now you're asking us, to, you know what I'm saying, to take on other things that's going on within our households or other battles, domestic violence, drug abuse, alcoholism, you know what I'm saying, physical abuse, all those things. I witnessed all of them, all of the above. I checked every last one of them. So I'm thinking about in this culture right here, this got a whole nother element called social media. Mm. So now when you talk about pouring into our people, we got to take them back to the fundamental thing of, I love you and I'm going to pour into you and I care about you because I'm not going to let the streets get you. I'm not going to let the devil have victory in your life. So it's a different thing for me. I don't need a title. The only title that I've been disposed upon is the one I gave myself, King's Kid. Because God loved on me and gave me a purpose. And I was blessed to discover why. So whether it's Big Woo Radio, whether it's making connections with Allie, whether it's a digital meet and greet with some guy named Jay, whether, what, whether it's t and &E with Tony Nicole, uh, no matter the platform, every last one of them go back to the same thing. God provided the avenue. And so yeah. it's only right did I fulfill my purpose? And as long as I got breath in my body, as long as I got a heartbeat, as long as I'm able to move, because I'm moving and advocating for people, they can't. I am the voice for the voices. And I take that on my shoulders and I'm gonna move through. So when I say I wanna connect with each one of y'all, it's bigger than radio. Mm -hmm. We locking horns, we uniting together, and we are gonna walk and take these steps together. Know what I'm saying? The, fight, the body we fall, but together we stand. They yeah. ain't trying to see that. Yeah. They ain't trying to see that. But guess what? We are the leadership and we are the leaders to make it happen. And I'm telling you tonight, we are going to bond together mm -hmm. and we're going to walk together and we're going to take steps together. And for those that need us, you know what I'm saying? We're going to love and lean on each other 
and we're going to make this thing happen. I thank God for you, Timothy, for this opportunity, for these moments to speak. Because believe <laughs> in me, the love that is manifested within me, we're going to spread it in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And the devil going to still be big mad. Yeah. Trust me on that. Yes, you going to be big mad. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm so thankful for you, JT. When I tell you, you know, I've been going through some things these last couple of years and every single time I can always count on you to reach out or I can always count on me reaching out to you and you giving me a prayer or a kind word or something like that. You have truly been a friend um, to me, not just, you know, I think I actually met Allie through you, I believe, JT. Um, so uh, you have connected me with a lot of amazing people um, and have always been very, very supportive, as I know you will be for the other people on our platform tonight. Because when you say you're going to do something, you do it. And that is something that I can go to the bank on. So um, definitely, definitely appreciate you. Um, I would love for you to tell us real, real quickly about your, um, you were, was it the best book? Were you the author of the year? You just oh, won an award. Queen City Award, um, yes. author of the year for 20, 2022, the most recent one. Yeah, I, I, yes. I, I'm blessed beyond <laughs> belief. When I tell you, um, God will show up and show out. I mean, it, it's, it's been one thing after the other, but he said, when is your time? He's going to position you in front of your lovers, your haters, and mm. your bystanders, and your audience. And he's going to make those that didn't believe and those that hated on you, they're going to be your footstool. Mm. And they're going to be the ones that's under the standing ovation that's clapping lightly. And you're going to feel that energy too. Because brought, God brought you through something in order to bring you out of it. And you will not leave here like this show tonight. You will not want to leave this show the same way you came. You're going to leave different. Point, point, period. Straight like that. Mm -hmm. This show hit different. Everybody that listened to it tonight, everybody that's visualizing it tonight, you will go out and be a different person because you were impacted by what we talked about tonight. Trust and believe that. And if you don't believe me, watch how your soul move different. Watch how your spirit move different. It ain't about me. It's bigger than me. God has showed up and showed out. If you don't believe me, think about how you're feeling right about now. You pretty much so happy. That's right. Yeah, you did. You you definitely you spoke a word and you just, <laughs> you made my, my soul. My soul was so happy because yesterday. Last night before I went to bed, I was like, you know what? I just want to, you know, get online and I want to, you know, just sing a song. And yeah. so I got on and I sung this song called Hold On, Change is mm -hmm. Coming by mm -hmm. Sounds of Blackness. Because I do feel like change is coming and I feel mm -hmm. like people are actually starting to embrace mm -hmm. their their reasons for being here, you know, for the ones that are wearing mm -hmm. there. They're stepping out and they're moving by faith. They're not, you know, they're yeah. not worried about what they see. They're moving by faith. And, you know, that was definitely a good confirmation, you know, that things that I personally wanted to do and, and been trying to do that, you know, they're manifesting. It may take more time, but definitely appreciate you sharing that, my brother. Definitely appreciate that. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. So what I would like to do now, because we have about 10 minutes left is would like for everyone to share their social media and one thing that you're needing right now for your organization um, or your cause, okay? So your social media and one thing that you're needing for your, for your cause um, so that those that are watching and we'll be sharing this throughout the, throughout the week, for those that are watching that they'll be able to listen and hear directly from you what um, what you might be needing for um, your organization, um, for your event that you have coming up, even if you're looking for, for guests for your podcast. So um, I'm going to, Miss Belinda, you look like you're ready. Miss Belinda, tell us your social media, how people can find you and what are you needing for God's gift baby ministry? Um, social media, Facebook. Um, I'm not on trip, Twitter and none of that stuff right there. For Facebook, <laughs> you could also um, email me at um, God's Gift Baby Ministry, or well, God's Gift BM at gmail.com. 
Um, so what God's gift baby ministry need? A building. Okay. <laughs> I need a building. God's gift baby ministry need a building. Yes, I need <laughs> somewhere to put all of these blessings that yes. I have, but where to put it. I'm tired of my dad, bitty my dad in the back of the people cards and <laughs> my daughter get ready to put my stuff out of the attic. Yeah, that's what I'm, <laughs> which is not though. But yeah, I need a building. God's gift baby ministry need a building. Yes. I yes. put it out there now. I'm happy. Yes. I'm yes. waiting on it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Let yes, come thank you so for you that. You have your office down the hall. Yes, yes. So we, we we've been needing that that storage for you for a while, um, Miss Thing. And when she comes to pick up um, our donations from um, our baby girl, her van is packed full with other donations or her dropping off donations or something like that. Actually, I have some more donations for you, Miss Belinda. So um, yes, she needs storage space um, because she has taken over her home and her, her kids home with, with stuff, but then that's a good thing. So she is busting out the seams with donations and that's a good thing, but she needs a place to store all of this goodness that she is trying to give back um, to the community yes. and to mothers and to children and the babies in the community. So if you have storage space, if you have storage space that you can donate or sponsor to um, Ms. Belinda, please, 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 please reach out. <laughs> please reach out. Um, so she can get her vehicle back. <laughs> and, um, or you can reach out to me. We need a building for God's gift baby ministry. Yes, Allie, Allie, JT, y'all hear that? She needs, she need it put out there. She needs to put out there. She needs some storage space. <laughs> I got you. it done. Yes, Look, thank it you. can be all about office building. We can just all just have one big building and we all got office space, okay? Yes. Since Big Who no. said we were going to connect and we were going to do this together. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we just make sure that we just got a big gym so I can put <laughs> everything on God's gift baby ministry in there, okay? Yes. No. <laughs> Yes, the Indeed. Unity Community Center um, with uh, Rodney McGill. Um, I'm going to reach out to him and ask him if he has any um, ideas about um, some storage space for you. So I'm going to reach out to him when we get off tonight and connect you to. Um, so yes, she needs some storage space, y'all. She needs some storage space. Miss <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Lissandra, tell us um, how to reach you, social media, and what are you needing? Okay, well, of course, if you're interested in being a part of Queen City Single Social Network, you can find me on there. Um, you can look in the events tab and you can see the events that are coming up in the group. And you can go on there and see what we have in our next meetup for people to bring donations that they have um, for that. So that's the main thing I need right now. But I'm always taking donations for um, items for individuals for the homeless as well, like JT does, um, for especially specifically for the women, like the feminine hygiene items and things that they can use to dispose of those items. Um, so those things I'm looking for because I do a lot of uh, work through my, uh, I have a local chapter that I do with the Eastern Stars. And so if anyone wants to be a blessing to that with any donations, they can definitely let me know. <laughs> thank you thank you You're so welcome. much thank you so much um i appreciate that so she is needing is there any particular items that you're specifically needing like i know um some organizations they need like um coats or they need uh toiletries like deodorant and toothpaste what are do you have any specific needs that you're looking for especially for i would say for the yeah, I would say for the specific needs of things that sometimes are really hard to come by, of course, are the feminine hygiene products, mm -hmm. um, just like Miss Belinda stated, the diapers, um, the formula, any items that they may have to just pack up and take with them right away. Uh, book, empty book bags um, are good for them to store items. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been purchasing like the, uh, what they call them, the hot hands. And so, because it's cold right now, so I'm going to put mm -hmm. together some stuff um, for that, like the uh, 
the uh, the heated ponchos and uh, the gloves and scarves to try to get that to them in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, have a box full of hot cocoa. Chapstick is another thing I think that goes uh, uh, that probably goes under the radar that they might need to keep their to protect their you know their their, their lips and stuff during mm -hmm. the cold weather. So just things like that are I think some of the items that would really be helpful for like right now. So. I can okay. start getting out there and putting that stuff together. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, definitely would like to connect with you um, with uh, BVP Project Safe Haven and then okay. um, also through the PR so that we can um, do like a drive for you or something um, okay, together awesome. to get those items from you. And I will make sure that I include everybody that's on the platform tonight. Um, so awesome, awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Um, Ms. Chantel, uh, tell us how to reach you on social media and what are your needs right now? Um, I'm mostly on Facebook. I have other sites, but I don't be on them. <laughs> so I'm mostly on Facebook or you can reach us at info at uniqueblessings.org. Mm -hmm. um, and that's blessings with an S. And what do we need? Um, we are looking for new board members, active. Let me put emphasis on that. Active mm -hmm. board members. Um, and then volunteers. We have concession stands um, at the stadium. And so we are in need of anyone that would like to volunteer to help us continue to raise funds so that we can continue to do the work and serve in the community. Um, to Ms. Melinda, I actually do have um, an office that I barely use, I'll be honest. Um, and I also have some storage space there. So I'm willing to share that. And then um, to our other sister, I recently got some donations of feminine hygiene products that I would don't mind donating them to her. This is what it's all about, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Ms. Chantel, also my company, they do grants for, uh, for organizations up to, I believe it's either $5,000, $10,000. So if you have a nonprofit organization, and of course, since I'll be assisting you all with whatever you all do as my time and my resources permit, um, send me your information and I can send you that. So whenever they get ready to do that grant money for those, I can mm -hmm. put your all name in there so we can see if Spectrum can get you all some of that grant money. And okay, it's free. Sounds, no strings, sounds, no strings sounds, attached. Sounds great. And we are a yeah. one, two, three um, organizations. Absolutely. I failed to mention it. So we are, but yes, I'll be in connection yeah. with you. Okay. Nice. Awesome. So Ms. Lissandra, is that only 501c3s or are they working with um, grassroots organizations too? I believe the way that it's uh, it's listed on what I saw, because I just, I had nominated one last year. Mm -hmm. Um I believe it can be a grassroots organization, any organization that's doing something to make an impact in the Charlotte Mecklenburg County community. That's what nice. they're looking for. Um, nice. So the, our, our diversity segment handles that, but they said any we have, we can, we can submit as many as possible. So whatever you have, send it to me and I'll put it out there and be praying that God, you know, you get that money because they give nice. it away. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yes, we definitely need funds to provide that emergency shelter because I can I'll get a phone call like last week and the young lady literally just left her abuser and she it was cold last week and she was needing um, a room while she was trying to get to her family. Um, and so sometimes I come out of my pocket for that if we don't have funds sitting. So definitely a good resource. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. You're Thank welcome. You. Very welcome. Um, and, Ms. and Tiffany, oh. let me um, add in a little bit. So mm -hmm. with our organization, um, if you ever run into that situation again, check with us because sometimes we do have funding and mm -hmm. we will pay a few nights um, for the for the victims. Definitely will because I, I get calls, calls regularly. So I definitely will. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. De Leon. <laughs> I know you're tired of me messing with you and your name, no, but I love no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, tell us um, how we can find you on social media and what are your needs right now? Sure. Uh, I can be reached at uh, 3D Periscope Films. Uh, and I, I actually, uh, that is my professional email that I use to answer questions regarding self-defense and anything doing with media because I'm also, I also do videography. 
So 3D Periscope Films, I also have a YouTube channel that I actually upload content to from uh, everything I do regarding self-defense, uh, health and wellness. It's uh, Dark Lion Damon 3D Periscope Films. Got That's it. The channel. Got it. Uh, I'm currently under construction with a new website. So I'll be, uh, I look forward to networking with everyone and I'm looking forward to uh, getting that up and running. As far as uh, needed, uh, I, I have all my tangible items that I need to, to train uh, people. Uh, just individuals with an open mind, that's it, that are interested. I have one of those type of um, unique businesses that people have to see a need for it. You know, they, mm -hmm. can, they, can feel, they can see that the, they can see the relevance of it, but they have mm -hmm. to feel that they need it. Right. So, right. you know, just, just any individuals that have an open mind that want to learn something that have, they haven't been taught before regarding the legalities and things of that nature. So, yeah. you know, I'm all for it. Maybe that might be um, a good um, activity for your um, your social uh, group, Miss Lissandra is doing. I was a, just thinking a, that when he said that, I was like, you know what? I can yeah. uh, do an event for that and see if there's some ladies who might be interested in doing that self-defense class. So yeah, mm -hmm. we can collaborate on that and I can get them to sign up and yep. we can make mm -hmm. it an event, you know, for, for men and women that are yes. interested. Okay. And I would I would love to partner with you with that. So great, great. All righty, yeah. all right. I wanna I want in on the self-defense too. Yep. <laughs> We're yep. out I know a little yeah. keto, but that's all I, <laughs> I definitely I want to in on, I want in on too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, Tiffany, it looked like that you got you got a class right here that's ready to start as well. So I, I mean see. I just to put it out there, you know. <laughs> all right. Sounds see, good. All right, well, let's let's let's, let's make it happen. Move. We making let's moves make right now. We making moves tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Miss Ali, Miss Ali, uh, tell us um, how we can find you on social media and what are your needs right now. So across the board on social media, I'm Ali Virtuous. That's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, um, for the show, however, it's making connections with Ali, and so um, listen. You all go to calendly.com <laughs> forward, sla forward slash making connections TV and pick your date that you want to be on the show so we can tell more about your organization. And like I said, really, whatever I can do to help promote what you've got going on when you have events and stuff. Y'all just have to remind me because I can't keep up with all y'all greatness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here for you and whatever I can do. And uh, listen, social media is a beast. So if you've got some people who can help with some social media functions, send them my way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And I know all of us always have events going on. So make sure that when y'all are having events, please send it over to Allie so she can get it out there um, to her networks too, because she has an amazing network of professionals, business owners, community leaders, artists, all of that good stuff. So um, definitely reach out to her if you have any events coming up and make sure you, you schedule those interviews too, because she, when is your, when is, when is your lives? Is that Saturday? When is your so, um, Saturdays at 12 noon, noon and yep. Mondays at 2 PM. And then okay. JT is always with us every fourth Monday. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Thank you so much, um, Allie, for sharing. Um, I think I got everybody but JT. So JT, tell us how we can find you on social media and what are your needs right now? Didn't I tell you God was shifting in the atmosphere and look what that happened. All the connected mm -hmm. networking and yep. it's, different. it's different when God moving. Man, it's <laughs> God moves, mm, it's fine. It's, it's simple with me, James Sherman Thompson on Facebook. On the IG, connect with me at JT underscore Big Woo Radio. Um, on Twitter, it's at JST Productions. Um, to get on Big Woo Radio, just send me an email, JT at BigWooRadio.com. Um, go all our episodes of BigWooRadio.com. If you got the podcast app on your phone, just go to podcast, type in Big Woo Radio. So the 747 shows of uh, Big Blue Radio content on there. And, you know, last but not least, again, I want to contact, I want to connect with all of y'all. So whether it's IG, Facebook, however, let's, let's connect. Um, the biggest thing that I can tell you that I need, continued prayer for love, manifestation, the strength, and the mental to move forward. Continue to pour into our, our culture, our kids, our youth, 
are elderly and to leave no stone unturned as we continue to walk in purpose, light, and faith. And the understanding that each of us have the genius inside of us that is called common, but it's beautiful and special. Let's apply pressure and watch and see what blooms and what blossoms and what we put in the atmosphere. Nice. I I know why I always have you go last because you always you just you just always just say something that I don't even have to say anything else to end out the, the podcast. You always end us off right, you know. So it's just like uh, was it Jerry Springer when he has uh, those last minute thoughts? It's like JT he gives he does the last minute uh, yeah. thought. JT put and the oil on it. Yeah, right, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, right. to say anything. You know, it's, okay, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you everybody for um, for watching um, and supporting our businesses that are are here. Um, we have uh, businesses, we have podcasts, we have nonprofits, we have all that a, a social group, everything on here tonight. Self defense, um, anything and everything um, we have right here. I'm also going to post the link for the first uh, special episode that we did. My why, your why. Um, we learned about a lot of whys tonight. And they came from the heart. They came from those lived experiences, um, those understandings of what is needed in the community. Um, and then also just being able to network with one another. Um, you can't be successful in any business. I don't care if it's a nonprofit. I don't care if you're an artist. I don't care if you're a, a single socials group. I don't care what your business is or what your purpose or mission it is. You cannot be successful without others. You cannot be successful on your own. You have to network. You have to make those connections. And you have to support people. You have to. If you don't yeah. support other people, then eventually people are going to stop supporting you. At least that's the way I, that's I right. it. <laughs> So um, we have some amazing professionals that were on with us tonight. Um, they're not only professionals and business owners, but they are community leaders in every sense of the word. So please make sure that you follow them. I tried to keep up and post um, to the comments on our Facebook page. Make sure that you follow us. You can watch this, share this, all of that good stuff. Please make sure that you reach out to um, the, the individuals on our platforms tonight. We have Ali, Belinda, JT, Deleon, Lissandra, Chantel, and of course myself. Um, look out for my book, Earn Your Wings, A 30-Day Journey from Survivor to Advocate. It is going to be on Amazon right now. You can pre-order it on my website, tiffanylbrown.com. I appreciate everybody that was listening tonight. We had a lot of people commenting um, tonight, so please, please, please reshare this this is for a good cause we cannot improve our community our homes our families our our you know provide a safe place for our children to grow up without each other so let's come together please share this so that other people can hear what you heard tonight and thank you everybody for taking your time and being on the private room with tiffany i appreciate you all and y'all will all of y'all are going to hear from me after this because uh we have some opportunities that we need to we need to get going so um you will all hear from me uh, after this episode thank you again for being here and have have a good night everyone thank you good night, night, everybody everybody good night, everybody night, everybody night, night, y'all everybody can give me the line with all the information yeah. so don't forget yes. <laughs> okay, <bye. laughs> good. thank you everyone good night. Good night. have a good night, night. all right